Senator Matt Canavan is uh, the chair of the Senate Standing Committee on Rural and Regional Affairs and Transport. It's a mouthful, Matt, but at the pointy end of it, you're looking into regional bank branch closures. Yeah, uh, Ricky, there's been a, a surge in, in closures. Uh, obviously, this has been something that's happened in the last uh, few decades, but in the last six months, 92 have either shut or announced to be shut across uh, regional Australia uh, since September last year. And so this is uh, this increasing concern has uh, made its way to many senators, including Senator Jared Rennick, my colleague from Queensland, and he was instrumental in uh, setting up a Senate inquiry on this uh, in the first week back from uh, our Christmas break. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're taking submissions at the moment from people, from concerned communities. As a committee, we've already called for the banks to pause bank closures during this period. Now, 10 branches have been saved, thanks to our call. Uh, some, though, have uh, continued to be shut, like Cooper Pedy. Uh, Westpac blaming there that uh, things had already gone down too far, leases were ending, etc. But we are continuing this fight to make sure Australians have adequate access to financial services. And if you're concerned about this, if you're impacted, please uh, make a submission to the committee. Now, I know the Kingston District Council are looking to organise a community forum and make a submission about the Bank SA branch closure that's in Westpac's um, stable. Uh, now, is there a chance there might be a Senate hearing there or somewhere else in South Australia to take evidence from the community like you did in Sale, Victoria? I'm confident we'll get to to every uh, state and territory uh, uh, maybe we'd accept, well, we'll probably have one in Canberra too, <laughs> but uh, they're probably not directly affected, but we'll have other people to see here. But I'm sure we'll get to across the country, including to South Australia. Uh, we're still taking submissions. We had that early hearing in sale uh, to ramp up pressure on one of the banks, Westpac, who were resisting our call to pause bank closures. And surprise, surprise, Ricky, the day after we sent them a letter asking them to come and visit us in sale uh, in regional Victoria, they announced they would um, not close eight branches. So... It shows this kind of stuff can have an impact and we'll continue that pressure up for the people affected by this. Uh, we'll now just wait and pause while we take these submissions in. They're due by the 31st of March, as I say. Please make them. If you just Google Rural and Regional Affairs and Transport Centre Committee, you'll find it. And then after that, we'll look at where we go specifically. Now, in the case of Westpac, you're talking about there in Sale, and I think also in uh, the Bank SA one in Kingston South East, it's more a stay of execution than anything else, isn't it, at this stage? They've just pledged not to close the branches while the inquiry finishes its work before the end of the year. That's exactly right. It's it's uh, it's something for people. Uh, they, these branches were going to be due to be shut the next few months, so that's uh, one positive outcome for now. But our challenge now is to make the case or push for uh, to ensure that uh, at least not all of these branches shut. Now, I, I don't want to make the promise that somehow no bank branch will uh, ever shut again. Uh, that's uh, not going to happen, and, and I do recognise things are changing. People are going in less. But we have to have a system in place where uh, these big banks who are making massive big profits work with local communities uh, about the changing uh, patterns of consumer behaviour and don't just up stumps and leave them high and dry. And so we heard in sale last week that uh, Westpac announced that they were leaving and closing that branch. Uh, they told the local media they'd consulted with uh, the local government about the change. That consultation we found out through the inquiry amounted to an email to the mayor uh, the afternoon before the announcement. That is a joke and a contempt, an absolute con treating regional communities like con in contempt. And uh, we need a process in place where these big banks are held to account. And if they do need to change their business practices, if a branch is not making money, they're not charities, I get that, they should be working with small regional towns who will be impacted greatly by any change, uh, not just sending an email, not just making a decision from a high rise in Melbourne or Sydney. Now, you mentioned that thing about customers going less into branches. We interviewed the head of the Banking Association, Anna Bly. She made a similar claim. But I noticed that at the sale hearings, the Finance Sector Union, who we've also spoken with on Flow FM, they've said, well, these are weasel words from the banks. It's part of their business model to close regional branches. Are you getting that impression that they're maybe pointing to a little bit of data showing less traffic in branches, but actually they, they're going to close them anyway. Well, look, I was concerned by that evidence from the Financial Services Union as we're still taking evidence, so I won't come to conclusions yet. But yeah, their, their evidence was that, uh, in fact, they're coaching their staff, the tellers, to try and almost force people, uh, force elderly people often to switch to online services as part of the business plan. You know, that, again, doesn't seem... Uh, acting in good faith, especially to the elderly, to the vulnerable from our big banks. These banks made more than $30 billion of profits in the last few weeks. Uh, and, and I guess I say they're not charities, but 
Uh, they, they, they like to tell us how virtuous they are. They should at least give back in some ways, especially to vulnerable uh, Australians. Well, will the inquiry be able to drill into or acquire documents from the banks? I notice a concern raised by your Nationals colleague, Michael McCormick, who's been hopping mad about the Commonwealth Bank closing the June e-branch, suggesting that, uh, well, I guess, bank IDs or whatever else were already being issued to new customers for the, the nearby branch, not the local branch, which helps sort of prop up the argument that there is a reducing number of customers. Yeah, that's right. And look, the June one is not closed now. And I, I, look, I, I think there are ways... Look, I, I do recognise fewer people are going into branches, obviously. Uh, online services are more convenient. I use them. Uh, you know, I, I, I've probably been into a branch two or three times the last five years. So that's the way the world is going. But uh, I like the, the, the Commonwealth Bank has come up with a model, and some other banks are doing this too, and hopefully this may now go to June, where they do reduce the hours that they're open, and that's a bit of an inconvenience, but at least the branch stays. And when the doors are closed, though, when the doors are closed to outside customers, the staff then patch in to the call centre, to the Commonwealth Bank's call centre. And that's an innovative way of keeping services for those people who still want face-to-face banking services, albeit with reduced hours, uh, and still also, of course, providing the jobs for people in those regional towns, because technology works both ways. Yes, technology means that fewer people are coming to branches, but technology also means that those workers based in a sale or Kingston or wherever in the country can patch in and work remotely in the call centre uh, where there is an increase in demand for, for services. So these are the sort of things that I hope... We need to force the banks to get their hands dirty on this stuff and not just take the lazy approach where, oh, yes, this, there's a change in our business here. Let's just shut this down and leave, as I say, a town high and dry. It might not mean much for the bank's bottom line, those decisions, but it means a lot uh, to those Australians who live in small country towns who otherwise wouldn't have access to financial services. We must do more for them. And just lastly, Anna Bly said to us that Australia Post is in a collaboration with a number of the banks to provide banking services. We spoke with Australia Post. They said, well, they believe they're currently well equipped to provide those services. But for that older generation, particularly uh, with confidential banking business, uh, are you going to draw Australia Post into the mix of whether they're really placed to sort of step into the gap? Oh, absolutely. We'll, we'll definitely be talking to Australia Post through this inquiry. And, and look, there are some positive things about the bank at post services that have been rolling out over the past 10 years, expanding. That has brought banking services to a whole lot of country towns that have never had a bank because there's a lot more post offices uh, than banks uh, that have, have, have ever been. So that is good. Uh, but they do offer only a limited range of services. You can't open and close accounts there. You can't increase credit limits, but you can do some banking. And also there's a question here about the capacity. If we more and more banks do close, uh, obviously some post offices are quite small and, and they don't necessarily have the staff. Uh, to take into account the flux that might come in. Again, this is something that the banks seemingly do no analysis or work on before they close and make these decisions to close. Uh, They just sit back and, as I say, take this lazy approach that, oh, we've got Australia Post there, everything will be fine. Uh, That that is not good enough, uh, in my view. We'll also, of course, I think, be looking at whether or not uh, the government should provide or help help Australia Post provide more banking services right across the country. There'll be a, there's a number of proposal submissions already about uh, some kind of government bank. There's a Kiwi Bank in New Zealand. Uh, I think we've got to be careful here. We don't want to crowd out, especially some of the good work that other banks or building societies and credit unions are doing. There's a lot of like little banks opening up uh, in in some regional country towns. But at the same time, that Australia Post network is a great asset that we have and can be a vehicle to provide financial mm-hmm. services to many more Australians that have ever, ever had access to them. Yes, Senator Matt Canavan, some irony there. A number of the banks we're talking about used to be government banks, and then they got privatised. So, yeah, I guess we could go down that path again uh, one day in future. The Senate inquiry is with the Senate Standing Committee on Rural and Regional Affairs and Transport. Look it up and make a submission if you're interested before the 31st of March. Senator Canavan, thanks for joining us here on Flow. Thanks so much, Ricky. Have a good day, mate.